Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range to talk about some affordable body armor. Now body armor is important, especially in today's world where crime is on the rise. And if you work in a dangerous profession, law enforcement, bodyguard, security, heck, even being an Uber driver in today's world can be a dangerous profession, you may want to consider body armor. Now there's a bunch of different products out there on the market to go from really affordable to really expensive. And today we're gonna to be looking at an affordable option. The vest I'm wearing here is one of Bullet Safe's top end products, and it comes to market at $300. So we're gonna test this. We're gonna be using some ballistics clay to talk about back face deformation. We're gonna hit it with a number of different cartridges. Some it's rated for, others it is not. And we're gonna talk about this. This is just more or less for fun. This is a ball cap that has armor plate or has an armor plate on the inside of it. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's kind of supposed to protect the frontal lobe of your brain bucket. I don't know. We're gonna have some fun with this as well. So stick around. We'll be shooting the ball cap that has some armor in front of it. And we'll also be shooting this vest with a number of different cartridges. If you enjoy our content, guys, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me and all private communications. And the link again is down below. Let's get started with today's video and do a little bit of shooting with the bullet safe products that you see here. It'll come packaged like this, and right on the front of it, it's gonna have pretty much all of its selling points. And those selling points are, this is NIJ certified level 3A armor, which means it's rated up to 44 Magnum, which means it'll stop up to 44 Magnum. It's also gonna protect you from stabbing threats and slashing threats. It has um, concealable soft armor. So when it says it's concealable, you'll notice that in its holder, it's still very thin, but if you take a look at the actual armor itself inside of the vest, it's even more thin. That is really, really thin armor. So it's very thin, pliable, and lightweight. It has eight points of adjustment, so you have these elastic bands for your shoulders and then on your sides, and you can adjust them from either side of the plate carrier itself. And then it's also upgradable to rifle protection. So this is NIJ certified level 3A body armor, but if you want to upgrade it, to stop a rifle threat, you can open up the pocket. It has means by which to secure the plate in the front and also in the back as well. So you can stick, you know, like a level four plate in the front and the rear. So now you have protection from all threats. The clay we're gonna have sitting behind the armor. And when we hit it with the various rounds, we wanna see how much disruption it causes to this clay because back face deformation or how much the bullet pushes through the armor, and pushes that armor into the material or the flesh behind it can be just as harmful or can kill you just as much as a bullet going through you can kill you if the back face deformation is too severe. So again, this is only 300 bucks. And yeah, it's just really, really thin, light, comfortable, very, very pliable. So nice stuff. Let's see how well it performs when we start shooting it with bullets. So let's get started off by shooting nine millimeter. We already know this, this armor is gonna stop the nine millimeter, but what I wanna do a little bit different is use some of this seismic ammunition. It uses a multi-part case, has 185 grain bullet, and it's claimed that heavier is better. So in theory, this is gonna deliver more of a punch. We have our clay back here that's gonna measure as best we can, uh, back face deformation to see if this little 185 grain bullet's really gonna put a dent in that clay or not. Also, I should mention that this armor is upgradable on both sides, front and back. You have the option to drop in armor plates that are for rifle protection. So you can drop a level four plate in the front or the back of this vest, thus upgrading it to uh, you know being able to stop a rifle round. All right, so with that being said, Let's just take a few steps back. I'm not gonna to get too terribly far away. I wanna stay fairly close to the target because gunfights typically happen at fairly close distances. That and the bullet's gonna be moving at its fastest. All right, so I'm gonna load up the SIG, take a few steps back and uh, get the slow motion camera ready and shoot this sucker. All right, guys, so here we go. 185 grain, nine millimeter. All right, so round hit right here. Let's go ahead and open it up. And that's actually pretty minimal for clay. And that's uh, not even one inch. So as you can see, the bullet did not make it through. 
that's just the inner material of the holder. Actually, I think that's the certification. Yeah, that's the certification on the back side of the armor. But uh, it just tore the, uh, the carrier. No penetration. All right, perfect. We expected that. But that's really interesting. Minimal back face deformation. That's actually a good thing. All right, guys, 158 grain, 357 Magnum. It's a soft point. We're going to shoot it out of a six inch Dan Wesson from about the same distance. We fired our nine millimeter, which isn't very far. And let's see what that back face deformation looks like, because I do expect it to stop this round. All right, guys, this is where the 357 mag bullet hit. Again, wow, it didn't even tear the liner on that one. This is the nine millimeter. This is 357 Magnum. Yeah, hit right there. Back face deformation. Look, look how much wider. How it's it's like it, it's like a fist-sized punch. Instead of having a little hole where the nine millimeter hit, it has more of a, a larger area that's been depressed, which is a good thing. That little hole would be more painful than that, I would suspect. All right. All right, guys, next up is the 44 Magnum. We're shooting a 240 grain jacketed hollow point. This is like the king of handgun horsepower. Used to be for a long time anyway. Put one around into our Smith & Wesson Model 69 here. And take careful aim. And let's see, aim right there. All right, guys, did knock the clay over. This is where the 44 mag round hit. Did not make it through. That, guys, is serious back face deformation. I mean, it, it bulged the clay considerably. That is nasty, nasty stuff. Now, while a bulletproof vest will keep a bullet from going through you, it is still going to be quite painful to be hit with something like a 44 Magnum. It may even still put you in the hospital. And heck, if it hits you just right, it could stop your heart, it could actually kill you. So the best policy is to try to avoid things like bullets. But um, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know if that would be considered lethal or not. This is just regular old modeling clay. I'm not sure what medium the FBI uses to measure back face deformation. We're just showing you this modeling clay to give you an idea of what it looks like. That's going to leave one heck of a mark on the other side, but it did keep the bullet from going through you. All right, guys, up next is the 30 Super Carry. It's a 100 grain ball round. And the reason we're going to shoot the armor with this is because it's a brand new cartridge out there. And there probably aren't a whole lot of videos that have, you know, been produced yet that shows the 30 Super Carry hitting soft armor like this. So we'll go ahead and shoot this. But that's going to be the last of the conventional loads. That's because it already stopped a 44 Magnum. If it can stop a 44 Magnum, it can stop a 10 millimeter. So that we're going to call, and then we're going to move into the 7.5 FK, and then a couple of other cartridges that I think you guys are going to enjoy, including our A10 buddies that are flying overhead right now. All right, 30, super carry up. This is where the 30 Super Carry hit, just to the right of the 44 Magnum. Interesting. Again, we're down to that small divot like nine millimeter versus the big impression that we got out of something like 357 Magnum or even the 44. And it did not make it through. It stopped it, and it stopped it even though it only hit maybe an inch away from the 44 Magnum. So even though that's really light, thin body armor, it's definitely delivering the goods and will certainly stop the threats that it's rated to stop. Now let's move into some of the threats it's not rated to stop to see what happens. So we've flipped the body armor around so we have a fresh panel to shoot at. We've put the clay behind it, 
and now we're going to take a shot at it with the 95 grain bullet that's doing 2,000 feet per second out of the 7.5 FK uh, Bruno pistol here. This is the PSD. This is their affordable pistol. The earlier models were very expensive. This one's quite affordable. By comparison, it's also available in 10 millimeter and 9 millimeter. But the most fun cartridge is the 7.5 FK. Should also mention that the body armor itself is 100% made in the USA. With that being said, it'll be really interesting to see how this thing fares against the 7.5. This is where the round hit. On the other side, it stopped it. <laughs> Guys, all right, that is a hot rod cartridge. Now that back face deformation, that is gonna probably put you in the hospital. I mean, it's up to my first knuckle, so it's, it's over an inch. FBI says two inches, but again, this isn't official test medium, but it did not penetrate. Wow, that I didn't expect. I really expected that, that bullet to zip right through. It's definitely not rated for that. That's pretty cool. Next up, we have one, a 27 grain, 5.7 by 28. This is another small, fast bullet. Again, 27 grains, really stepping it out. I'm gonna fire it out of the Ruger pistol. And we're going to see if this small pointy bullet moving out really fast, will be able to defeat this body armor. Keep in mind, the original 5.7 was intended to defeat soft armor, but the ammunition that it does that with is not readily available to the U.S. market. This is the green tip SS-198 LF for lead-free ammo. All right, here we go. All right, guys, round hit right there. Look at that, that's cool. Look at that little protrusion right there. It did not make it through. It stopped the 5.7 at close range out of the handgun. And again, there's the back face deformation. It hurt, but that definitely wouldn't kill you. All right, hmm. If speed won't defeat it, let's try just raw horsepower. All right, guys, we give up on speed. Well, maybe not speed. We give up on small and fast. We're going to big and fast. <laughs> this is a 460 Smith & Wesson. This is a 200 grain bullet that is capable of 2200 feet per second out of a gun that has a longer barrel than the one I'm gonna be shooting. The one I'm shooting today has a shorter barrel I've been in the market for a longer barrel version of this for hunting, but just never found one and picked it up. But so, yeah, we're going to use the stumpy little barrel, but it still should launch this bullet at pretty darn high velocities. And it's 200 grains of just pure raw horsepower. <laughs> I have not shot this gun in a while. Look how massive that cylinder is. And it only holds five rounds. Look how thick the cylinder walls are. That's because this thing is a frickin' cannon. All right, here we go. Where are we gonna aim? Right there. Jeez! That hurts my ears, even with good ears on. Man, that's a wrist-torquing cannon shell. And the 44 Magnum knocked it over and this didn't. <laughs> Let's see what it did. All right, guys, <laughs> here's where it hit. And the big reveal, oh my God, <laughs> it stopped it. But guys, you're still going to the morgue. <laughs> Maybe if it hits you in the guts, not in the chest. Otherwise, that's just gonna drive a rib right through your lungs. But what's amazing is it actually stopped it. Look at that bulge in the armor compared to the other rounds. Even the 44 Magnum is nothing nothing compared to this thing. And that was a 240 grain, 44 Magnum out of a longer barrel. Even out of that short barrel, that thing's got some horsepower. Wow. We came out here today thinking we were gonna be able to defeat the armor with at least one of the cartridges that we brought out. 
and we failed. All right, so technically speaking, this started life as a pistol. This is the chopper or the Draco pistol. It has an eight inch barrel chamber 762 by 39, but this was also my very first SBR project I'd ever uh, done once I moved to Indiana and now a registered SBR. So we're gonna take a 762 by 39 round in my banana clip and we're gonna see if it can stop this pistol's round from penetrating. We're gonna defeat this armor yet today, I think. All right, guys, let's put the chopper down. Now, as you can see, <laughs> just kind of, clay just kind of went all over the place. Hit right here. Wow. <laughs> so it definitely came through. It's nice, like, nice clean hole. Some clay back here. The clay stopped it. And the clay just like, it, it created such a large wound cavity. Look at this, it just like, <laughs> there is an exit on the backside. I wonder if the bullet's like laying around here somewhere. We'll have to look around on the ground. We may find the bullet yet, but man, look at that. That's the reason it kind of caved in on itself. That's what I call back face deformation. Actually, that's what I call penetration. That's insanity. All right, guys, so here we go. This is a 124 grain ball around nine millimeter. We're gonna shoot the ball cap. I have one on right now. And it is level two armor. So we're not gonna cheat. We're gonna use a common cartridge, probably the most common cartridge out there right now. And that would be that nine millimeter. Got it sitting over there behind a clay block. And if this hat stops this 124 grain ball round, then I'm gonna let Jason shoot me in the head with a nine millimeter round. All right, here we go. All right, the bullet hit right square in the armor plate. Let's see what we got on the other side. Oh, so it is soft-ish armor. It's not pliable, but you can definitely see different layers of it. It stopped. Somebody's gonna have a nasty headache and that somebody isn't gonna be me because I was just kidding when I said I would let Jason shoot me in the head if it stopped it. That was, that was a joke. You said I could though. But it was a joke. Uh, no, no, no. Dude, it was a joke. Uh-uh. It's a joke, Jason. I'm not gonna let you shoot me in the head. No, not today. I quit. Well, after all the testing we did this afternoon, this armor actually went way past my own expectations. I definitely expected the 7.5 FK to punch through. When it didn't, I was hoping maybe the 5.7 by 28 would do it, but I really wasn't all that surprised when it didn't. So we had to resort to a rifle cartridge and that finally defeated it, but that's cheating. What I will say is, this vest will stop darn near, if not every common handgun cartridge that's available on the market, unless you're using something that's special purpose built or you have access to 5.7 ammo that's designed to penetrate such armor. The average bad guy isn't gonna carry something that's gonna defeat this armor. $299.97, that's really affordable protection that is super lightweight. I've been wearing this all afternoon, very comfortable. I've been able to shoot with it, I'm not sweating excessively. It's uh, it's actually really nice armor. Very impressed. Now, what you want to avoid if wearing this armor or really any type of soft armor are two things. Old timers carrying big old wheel guns and people carrying rifles. Rifles will penetrate soft armor. All right, guys. Well, there, I think there is some soft armor out there. We'll see if we can't get our hands on some of that soft armor that's supposed to stop rifle rounds. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down below. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. Link down below. Right here on YouTube, you can support us. There's a little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Click that join button, and you can support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And also, last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you guys for 14 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.